Hi, I'm Jack Cush. I'm coming to you from Barcelona and ULAR 2025. This is an early look at a new problem that we're dealing with, and that is at-risk RA, clinically suspect arthralgia, preclinical RA. The question is, when do you treat these folks? How do you treat them? So we've had a few trials demonstrating the efficacy of a few drugs, but in general, it's not that clear. There's a sort of a, a collision now of several sets of data that I think are somewhat instructive. We reported this week on Room Now the results of a 2025 ACR ULAR risk stratification criteria. This is a paper that was published that gives us some insight as to maybe who should get treated with more aggressive therapies when they just have arthralgia and may be at risk because of ACPA or being positive uh, for family history. So um, that paper says that the criteria, a point-based system, um, is based on morning stiffness, patient-reported swelling, inability to make a fist, C-reactive protein, rheumatoid factor, and ACPA levels. And there's high and low points for low levels of morning stiffness or high levels of ACPA. Uh, and that uh, seems to be a reasonable approach, but that's very different than what's being reported here at ULAR. Specifically, there are two important long-term follow-up studies to the APIPRA study and the ARIA study. So the ALTO study, OP004, is a long-term follow-up study of the APIPRA study. APIPRA was a a two-year trial where patients with at-risk clinically suspect arthralgia, ACPA positive, but a positive MRI or ultrasound, so they didn't have synovitis, right? 200 plus patients who were either given abatacept subcutaneously or placebo for a year and then followed for a year off of that. In that study, we do know at the primary endpoint at week 52, 6% who received abatacept went on to develop RA, but if they received placebo, it was 29%. But after a year, another year of follow-up off of drug, it kind of it didn't make, seem to make much difference. It was 30 and 40%, small difference. They followed those people out to as long as six years. And what they found in the two-year study holds true in the six-year study, and that is the patients who had the best responses were the ones with an extended autoantibody profile, meaning they had ACPA and rheumatoid factor, uh, several ACPAs, um, and a number of different um, antibodies, anti-acetylated protein antibodies, anti-carbamylated protein. If they had all five of them, you were likely to have an extended response. In a two-year study, it was 50% of the placebo patients went on to develop uh, RA, but if you had this at five serotype profile, only 10%. That was at two years. That same result is carried out to two years and four years, and as long as six years. At four years, the extended autoantibody, it was 47% of abatacept developed RA versus 67%. So it starts, there's still some protection is the point. And that's just with one year of treatment. So the profile being not what the ACR ULAR risk stratification said, but here it's being ACPA positive and really high titer plus five other autoantibodies for RA. This is a little bit different than what was shown in the ARIA study. The ARIA study was another abatacept study. About 100 patients were enrolled in a six month trial abatacept versus placebo, and then they were followed for another 12 months. At the end of six months, 8% of abatacept and 35% of placebo developed RA. And in this study, they followed them initially out to 18 months where it kind of the lines start to come together, suggesting that there's a, the delay is being lost, 35% versus 57%. But what they found in their prolonged study at 5.3 years, the people who never developed RA were those who had lower SED rates, lower rheumatoid factor, lower pain scores, better functional status. Meaning that the opposite of that might be the people who are 
are at high risk. Um, and maybe those are the ones that you do want to treat, and you, maybe that you do want to treat them with abatacid. So from these three studies, we're getting a picture of the people that we may want to treat more aggressively with abatacid, right? So the extended autoantibody profile and maybe the, pe the people who had um, high risk disease, not low risk disease, from the ARIA study. One more caveat, and that is the treat earlier RA trial with methotrexate only showed in past publications that it worked only in seronegative, actin negative patients. So again, these are sort of rules as to who may need treatment in this hard to manage group. Do you treat them, do you not, when they have clinically suspect arthralgia but no arthritis? Tune in for more great abstracts and presentations from ULAR 2025.